We perform tummy tucks or abdominal plasty all the time. It's one of my favorite surgeries. The purpose of a tummy tuck is to remove not only fat, but to remove skin as well. When patients have had usually significant weight loss, fluctuation, or have had babies, there's tremendous amounts of excess skin. We need to remove that in performing a tummy tuck or a paniculectomy. The type of tummy tuck depends upon the amount of skin laxity, as well as whether we need to tighten up the plicate, the rectus muscles, the muscles along the midline, especially after baby birth, because those are pulled apart. It also depends upon how much skin there is, both below the belly button, as well as above the umbilicus. A mini tummy tuck is excellent for our patients that have just skin along the lower, lower abdominal area, but the skin around the belly button and above is in good shape. We just can do a mini tummy tuck. Full tummy tuck or extensive tummy tuck or abdominal plasty is where we dissect all the way up to the subcostal ribs high in order to get all the skin down, including the upper abdominal skin. That's a full tummy tuck. Finally, the tummy tuck sometimes will require hernia orifices or hernia repairs. If we diagnose a hernia repair, our general surgeon will often do a diagnostic test, a CT or ultrasound, depending on his wishes, and we can do a concurrent uh, hernia repair sometimes requiring mesh graft with the abdominal plasty. So there's a functional and there's a cosmetic component and they can be done at the same time as needed or deemed necessary. Liposuction of the hips is extremely important. I do this in most of the patients who have significant amounts of fat on the hip or the iliac crest at the same time as a tummy tuck in order to reduce the hips so they don't end up uh, too large or bowing outward. When you flatten the lower abdomen, you want to also contour the hips at the same time. The most common complications of abdominoplasties are seromas, and therefore seromas are reduced by our use of drains. We do use Jackson Pratt drains. They're placed for one week, and then I remove them once there's less than 24 cc's per drain per 24 hour period. Our patients also are given pneumatic compression boots in order to reduce risk of DVT, deep venous thrombosis, and God forbid, a pulmonary embolus. So DVT, prophylaxis, on low risk patients for tummy tuck or abdominoplasty is with pneumatic compression boots. Furthermore, our patients are maintained on antibiotics until the drainage tubes are removed and are given pain medication as necessary as well. The muscle tightening is extremely important and that's a big component of abdominoplasty because we need to placate that midline muscles back to the middle called the rectus sheath in order to give you a further tightening of the abdominal wall. And that's called abdominal tightening with lipectomy tummy tuck procedure. The recovery period for a tummy tuck is anywhere between six and eight weeks. This is a very invasive operation. It requires that the patients give themselves some time off, that there's no abdominal wall uh, exertion or exercise for the first few weeks. We don't want to tear any of the sutures, which could increase risk for bleeding, hematoma, or seroma formation. 